we're back on the Mark V Mondeo again, and today I'm doing boring, and I mean really boring, because this is one video I haven't done, so I thought I'd better get it out of the way. Front brake pads. Hmm. <laughs> I've removed the wheel already. Let me just make a point here before you actually decide to change your brake pads. The brake master cylinder reservoir you want to remove the lid. There's a good reason for that. Number one, if for whatever reason the fluid in this is too high, if you've got the cap screwed on and you push the pistons back in your calipers, it could spray out all over the bloody place and get on your paintwork. So if you remove it and maybe drain some of that fluid out of here, if you have to, if it is too high, or failing that, it will just rise up and overflow. Actually, looking at these discs, there's quite a lip. So I think I'll just change the discs as well. I think it would be pretty fair to say we've got our money's worth out of them brake pads. Messy old job brake pads. So I would suggest protection. All right, let's get this show on the road. This metal clip, if you get a lever bar between the disc and the clip, you can pry the clip inwards to these two points pop out but hold the clip, otherwise it will spring out and it might hit you in the face, so be careful. You see, look at that. You can spring it out and then release it. And then for ease of access, pull your steering round to the right. If you've got a flat screwdriver, you can pop off your dust caps that are hiding the bolts we've got to undo to release this caliper. Now there's different ways of doing this to actually push the piston back. You can take the caliper off and use a G-clamp if you like. But for this one, I'm just gonna put a screwdriver between the caliper and the brake pad, and then I can just lever the screwdriver and that'll push the piston back so far. And I'll just put a bigger screwdriver in here because it's a little bit difficult with that smaller one. And now I can lever that piston all the way back in. You are preferably going to be needing a seven millimeter Allen key and a ratchet. So we'll just get these two bolts removed. There we go. One Allen key come bolt slider because the caliper slides on this bolt as the pads wear down. I just thought you'd like to know that useless piece of information and once our two bolts are out we can now lift our caliper off try not to bend the brake for flexible hose and I can just put the caliper behind the back plate there one brake pad that's actually worn really thin so yeah caught them just in time two 18 mil bolts to remove your brake caliper carrier, I'm going to use an air gun because I'm lazy. <laughs> and it's easier. <laughs> and then your carrier will slide straight off. I will say these discs, I've not really had one that's been like tight tight on the hub where they, on the old Mondaires, they used to seize onto the hub and you used to have to hammer the bastards off. But now, on these Mark V's, every single one I've ever taken off, they've been quite free. Just a slight wriggle, and we're off. I'm just gonna spray our brand new disc with a bit of brake cleaner, just in case there's any grease or dirt on the new disc. We'll make sure all that, that's nice and clean and grease free and we'll plonk that back on the hub. Now we can slide our caliper carrier back on and get the bolt started, a good few threads in first by hand before you start using any air guns on them. Now I'll whack these two bolts up. These are Ford brake pads I'm using. There's no backing on these to peel off. There used to be when these cars first came out, but there isn't any more. The inner pad, for some reason, I do not know why, they've got an arrow on them. 
that arrow goes in the direction of rotation when you're going forward. So like a clockwise direction. I'll show you when I put it in the, in the caliper piston. But the only difference I can see between this pad and the other side is the actual little cutout here on our backing plate. And I, don't, I, I actually do not know why these have got arrows on them because I can't see any difference in this pad. It's, not, it's totally symmetrical. So if anybody knows, let me know. So our caliper's gonna go on like that. There's our pad with the arrow facing downwards as the disc is gonna turn clockwise. So our pad will now slot into that piston, give that a good press in, and that will locate, and we'll slot our caliper back onto our carrier. We can now pop our slider bolts back into place, but just remember, take it carefully when you're putting these bolts in, because they're quite easy to get them cross-threaded. So go in lightly, and get them in a good few threads before tightening them up. So all I'm saying here, take a bit of care when you're actually putting these bolts in. And if they do get cross-threaded, you'll know it straight away because they'll go tight, but they should spin in quite easily. I tighten both of these up. That's it. And then we can pop the little end caps back on save dust and water getting in there and seizing the bolts up. It's probably easier if you actually turn the steering back to the centre now. Now this spring clip, I found it easier if you hook the first notch into the top of the caliper like that, and this piece will be behind the carrier, then put your finger on it. You can then pull this bottom one over until it's behind the carrier, then get the palm of your hand and you can push this whole centre piece in and that one will clip in. Bingo. You see how easy that, that went back on? That's because I've done it a lot of times. And yeah, I've seen lots of people get into difficulties with them spring clips, so be careful. The alley wheels, if they're left on these hubs for too long, they can corrode. So you need to really get a wire brush and clean this hub up. Although I should have cleaned this before I put the disc on, but these weren't, these were free anyway. But I'm just showing you. So clean that hub up, and then it wouldn't hurt to put some like grease around that hub to stop it corroding and sticking. You can even put a bit of grease on your wheel studs as well, so the wheel nuts go on a bit easier. Yeah! What a! Pop the old wheel on. If you want to put a little bit of grease on your wheel nuts where they make contact with the alley wheel, then feel free. Now I'm going to do all these wheel nuts up by hand. Right, let's stick the dreaded locking wheel nut on. I'll just nip these wheel nuts up with a bar before I tighten them up properly when I get it, the wheel on the ground. And let's not forget to tighten your wheel nuts up. And believe it or not, it may seem a bit excessive, but these are 110 Newton meters. So now our road wheels are secure and torqued up, don't forget to replace the cap on your brake fluid reservoir. And finally, don't forget to pump your brake pedal a few times. Because come on, you wouldn't want to drive off straight into a brick wall, would you now? <laughs> anyway, stuff it. That's my boring little brake job done. So till the next time, see ya.